going everyone it's sam the etfs are battling it out they are trying to get as much under management as possible i want to talk about that talk about what's happening in the market if you don't mind hit subscribe turn on the bell notification underneath the video so you can see future videos like this as soon as i make them as you can tell i'm in a different location it's actually really beautiful here as you can see right out there beautiful beautiful resort that we're at here uh out in jamaica uh let me know if you've ever been here in the comment section but the crypto market is looking beautiful today i want to talk about that uh, i will say there is a link down there to margex in case you want to trade cryptocurrency on leverage i know i talk about this like a decent amount because i do think this is the time to be doing it if you are in a bull market this is the time where you can get outsized returns from leveraging long so that's why i talk about it of course there's always risk but if you want to try this out there is a link underneath the video and there's no kyc you don't need a vpn you can start with just ten dollars if you want you can set up an account deposit money and start trading so you can get a feel for it and then of course you can deposit more over time if you're interested there are a bunch of different forms of collateral too like you can trade bitcoin you can trade ethereum you can trade dogecoin and then you can set different uh types of collateral so if you want to trade dogecoin with bitcoin if you're really bullish on the dogecoin chart but you want more bitcoin well you can put your collateral as bitcoin and then trade the dogecoin chart there's also a link down there to coin w as well in case you want to start trading there you can definitely check that out they have futures and they have spot now bitcoin looking great today uh hitting new highs 72,000. it went up even higher earlier ethereum's well over 4,000 now bnb well over five hundred dollars i mean on the last seven days it's up 25 percent just absolutely raging there solana close to where it was just a few days ago at 147 xrp up 20 percent today out of nowhere it went up huge and i was actually talking to my brother about xr uh, xrp the other day he said i don't want to sell it because one day i'll look at it and it's going to be up 100 percent or 20 percent uh, and yeah we have a 20 percent day here today avalanche up 15 percent let's go into some of the news though Michael Saylor acquired an additional 12,000 Bitcoin for 821.7 million. Now we knew this was going to happen because they did talk about a convertible note recently that they got at 0.625% interest, just absolutely insane. And as Michael Saylor said, they're gonna be continuously buying the Bitcoin all time high forever. So they bought it at 68,500 and now they hold uh, 205,000 Bitcoin acquired for $6.91 billion at an average price of uh, just 33,706 per Bitcoin. Obviously, an o I don't want to say OG in the crypto space, but like a G in the crypto space, just absolute gangster, uh, doing something that no company had really done before. And Dylan LeClaire has talked about it, and I've talked about it before in the past, but he did have a tweet today basically explaining, okay, Michael Saylor, can go issue debt, which buys more Bitcoin, which causes the Bitcoin price to go up, which allows them to issue more debt and buy more Bitcoin, which causes the price of Bitcoin to go up, which allows them to continue this uh, path. And it's just like a flywheel effect that causes the price of Bitcoin to go up. And MSTR is up a massive amount since they started adopting this Bitcoin standard. They've just ballooned their AUM. Uh, an AUM because they actually hold these assets kind of as a company, but really just balloon their market price, their market cap. And we're still so small compared to gold. I mean, take a look at this. Gold upper bound estimate, 16.4 trillion. Bitcoin, less than one tenth of that. So we still have a lot further to go. Now, we still are seeing uh, a couple different commodities, a couple different uh, really stocks in front of bitcoin so we just passed silver 1.41 trillion uh now we're above silver but we still have alphabet amazon saudi aramco nvidia apple so and so on if we go up to 105k it jumps saudi aramco so it'd be a top five at 137 it enters the top three at 153 we'd be number two of course that's with today's prices but bitcoin still has a lot further to go we still see a lot of ETFs having massive inflows. And this is something that I've talked about. Like Mondays are an important day because so many people have talked to their friends and family about how much money they're making in Bitcoin. And then on Monday, people want to get in. They want to start investing in Bitcoin. So what do they do? Well, they go buy 
BITB, or they go by any other ETF. You can see Hunter Horsley, who is, I believe, the CEO, yeah, the CEO at Bitwise. He said, and this is before the market closed. This is like an hour and a half before the close. They already had a $50 million inflow into BITB for the day. $170 million inflow last week. By choosing BITB, the investors of this $200 million plus are contributing to the health of the Bitcoin ecosystem through their donation system to OpenSats. Basically, they take 10% of their profits and they go, um, they go donate to Bitcoin developers. Now, they're not the only ones that are posting about what they're doing, though. Uh, Vanek just waived all fees. This is kind of crazy. We believe in Bitcoin so much starting tomorrow. You can invest in Vanek HODL with no fees until March 31st, 2025. During this period commencing and ending on March 31st, 2025, the sponsor will waive all sponsors that sponsorship fees for the first $1.5 billion. So if they exceed that, then you'll be charged the 0.2%. But still... That's a year, a year with no fees possibly. That's pretty big news. And obviously they're all vying for as much in inflows as possible. So Van Eck doing this will probably get some extra inflows. Big day for inflows among the ETFs. You can see here IBIT, what fit down on the top volumes in terms of ETFs. IBIT with $3 billion traded here today in volume. Uh, GBTC with 1.58 billion and then FBTC unfortunately a little bit below GBTC at 1.41 billion dollars but this is still really good information uh, we'll have to see how this all shakes out uh, in terms of flows uh, oftentimes we do see pretty strong flows on Mondays and pretty strong volume because of the weekend but uh, we have already gotten some indication, as I said, about other ETFs and what their inflows have been. So we'll have to see how this all shakes out. But the ETFs are going to continue swallowing up a lot more Bitcoin. So Bitcoin's just going absolutely nuts. Of course, Michael Saylor's got to go on TV. Let's play this out loud. Hopefully you can hear it okay. Kind of in a janky setup here. But let me know if this is okay in the comment section. Bitcoin crossing the $70,000 mark for the first time on Friday this morning. It's now above $72,000. Join us right now to talk Bitcoin is Michael Saylor, Michael, our strategy executive chairman and AK out from the company this morning, revealing it just bought more than $800 million in Bitcoin. Really good quality picture here. Of last month, this company held about 200 thousand Bitcoins. And Michael, I uh, want to thank you for joining us. You have been uh, early and courageous and you continue to double down. Um, I want to talk about where you think Bitcoin is, but also want to talk about how you think about a micro strategy in your company as a proxy for Bitcoin now that ETFs are available to the public. Sure. Well, I think I'd start just with Bitcoin. It's Bitcoin is, is certainly at least digital gold. It's going to eat gold. It's got all of the great attributes of gold, and it's got none of the defects of gold. If you could teleport gold from New York to Tokyo in a, in a few minutes, people would like it. Um, it's going to divert capital from risk, risk assets and risk ETFs like SPY. And you can see that uh, these, uh, these ETFs are doing that. It's going to be incorporated into a lot of funds like the BlackRock Global Opportunities Fund or the Strategic Income Opportunities Fund. And so as it, it's an asset class. As it goes into other funds, it's going to become structural. The halving is going to cut the organic supply of natural sellers in half around April 20th. That means there's only about $31, $32 million a day of natural sellers. And the price of Bitcoin is going to have to adjust up in order to meet that investor demand. So I think that's what's going to happen next to the asset call. Okay, so sorry about the picture there. Obviously not good, uh, not very good internet here. But I think the audio is what's really important. Um, obviously, Michael Saylor is going to continue to get more and more press as the price of Bitcoin goes up. And obviously, he's a massive bull. Now, I did see some people talking about this. I think it was a French news station where the anchor said that Bitcoin going into the halving is going to cut the price in half to increase the demand. It's just nuts. Some people still don't understand what Bitcoin is. They don't understand the halvings. And can you blame them? Right? This isn't like this isn't understanding something that's super simple at the surface level. There are some people that just have no idea what it is. 
don't want to think about it. But as it becomes more proliferated, as more and more people talk about it, as more billionaires talk about it, we've talked about Bill Ackman, uh, Robert Kiyosaki recently, as they continue to talk about Bitcoin and crypto, it will go more mainstream. And eventually people won't even know really how it works but they'll just use it just like cell phones, right? Do you understand how cell phones work? Not really. Do you understand how the banking system works? Not really, unless you've worked in it. You don't really have to know it, you just use it. So this may be similar. Maybe you don't use it, but you invest in it, right? Do you, do most people understand how a company works, even with cash flows and capital expenditures? No, they have no idea. They just buy, their financial advisor tells them to buy, or some significant other, or some family member tells them that they should continuously buy, and they do that. Now, of course, there are other altcoins that are absolutely going nuts outside of Bitcoin. Uh, one I've talked about a lot on the channel recently is Syncus. This thing went up just an insane amount. I mean, take a look at this. Just going up, what, 15, 20, 30x, 30x from a month ago. And then it's it has taken a good dip, like 55, 60%. I will say, this is somewhat normal when you see cryptos that run this hard. Uh, they do have pretty big dips as well. I mean, it's still up 1,200% in a month. So you have some people that are taking huge amount of profits, but... The cryptocurrency itself is so much stronger than it was even a few weeks ago. I mean, take a look at this. Syncus price, the market cap's at 150 million. The daily revenue is at $2.2 million just a week ago. This was like at 100K a day or something like that. They're getting massive amounts of fees because people are selling. So what do they do? They reward stakers. They go buy back the token. The treasury balance is at $26 million. So, you know, if you feel like you missed out, maybe this is a time where you can look at it again, see if you want to buy this. But of course, I'm not telling you to do anything. You can go do your own research on this. I have made a few full videos on it. Um, XRP also jumping 20% in one hour. Just absolutely insane returns. I don't know who's buying this. I don't know who pumped up the price this much. But this was when Bitcoin was pumping. Uh, let me know what cryptos you're watching down below in the comment section though. I do have a couple longs open on Bitcoin, on Ethereum. Uh, I think Solana, you know, we see this rubber band action a lot of the time where Bitcoin moves up, Ethereum moves up, and then Solana kind of sticks for a little bit. I might be placing another Solana long because a lot of the time, Bitcoin and Ethereum run, and then Solana gets stuck behind and then starts running as well. So maybe that's a good time to go long on Solana. Let me know your thoughts on the com in the comment section, though. Again, you can check out Marjax. You can check out CoinW down below in the comment section. And there's a link to HGAlgo as well in case you want an indicator that kind of gives you an idea for when it might be smart to dollar cost average in or out of the market or to show you bullish and bearish momentum signals. So definitely check that out. Uh, I will be here for a little bit longer, so apologize for the setup, but you're gonna have to deal with it, I guess, a little bit longer. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. I will see you in the next video. Bye.